And I want to welcome in our panel on this Thursday morning. We got a great group commentary editor for The Washington Times, Kelly Sadler, back with us this morning, member of Project 21 and a national advisory board member. Christopher Arps is joining us from sunny downtown St. Louis, mm -hmm. Missouri. Once again, I don't know how they do it out there at 530 in the morning <laughs> in St. Louis, Chris, but that sun is always shining. Uh, and former Trump campaign aide Rick Gates is here as well. Rick, nice to see you uh, this morning. I want to uh, start with the situation in uh, Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Uh, we've had a fourth night of very violent riots uh, and protests. It was interesting, Rick. Uh, we'll start with you. I was, um, I was watching uh, CNN yesterday afternoon, and it's almost, at, they are, this room, it's deja vu all over again. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining MSNBC's Ali Velshi standing in front of a, a, a blazing inferno, calling it mostly peaceful. They refuse to call the protests riots. Protests are protests when they're peaceful, but when there is looting, uh, when there is crime, uh, those are called riots. And we saw that again, another huge number of arrests last night again in Brooklyn Center. And no one is condemning this on the left. And I don't know how that's good for America. It's not good for America, and it's going to continue. And even despite uh, Officer Potter being arrested, you still have this buildup to these violent protests. And I think that's the key. It's violence. And people are absolutely allowed to protest peacefully. They can demonstrate. They can make their voice known. But when you incite the violence, when you add that element to it, yesterday we saw that, you know, Officer Potter had to uh, barricade her house. The police came in and put fencing around it. That's not the America people expect to, to live in. And it's it's going to continue until our political leaders stop the inflammatory rhetoric, stop saying we need to abolish police, and actually look at the rule of law and due process. So I think, you know, there's going to be more of it to come, unfortunately. But our political leaders really need to step up and take charge of this issue uh, as quickly as possible. Yeah, Kelly, when the National Guard is called in, that usually means that the situation is not good. Um, police right now are dealing with, they are in riot gear. They've been in riot gear since Sunday. Last night, tear gas was deployed. Flash grenades were used again for a third night. Rubber bullets are also being used there. Uh, Kim Potter, uh, Potter rather, charged with second-degree manslaughter. Um, she will get her day in court. Uh, they are going to have to prove culpable negligence in this case. I, I think it's crystal clear that, that she was negligent. Um, do you think this was intentional in any way? You know, I think this was a tragic mistake, um, but she should be held liable for, for this mistake. She should have known better. Um, and there is negligence, but we're also in a real crisis in America. Last year alone, 264 cops were killed. That was a 96% increase from the year prior, and nobody is talking about it. Have you ever heard of the name Darian Jarrett? Well, he was a police officer that was killed in New Mexico just a month ago um, doing a routine traffic cop. But the media decides which narratives they're going to pursue, and the media, the mainstream media, is complicit in this. They blow up these local um, scenes um, where every case is individual and has their own specifics, and they try to make it into this race war, that cops are bad. And this narrative needs to stop because our men and women in blue are being assaulted at a rate that is higher um, than ever. What was that number, by the way? You mentioned the number of police killed. 264 last year, um, which was a 96 percent increase over 2019. And I bet that that the majority of people couldn't name a single one. Um, no. It's just this this situation, Christopher, is, uh, is is it's very troubling. But I think you could make an argument. Uh, it doesn't take away from how tragic uh, the story, this Dante Wright story is. But if he didn't resist arrest um, and just got there was a warrant out for his for his arrest for armed robbery. Uh, if he didn't resist arrest, he'd, he'd most likely I'd, I'd bet my bottom dollar that he'd be alive today. I, I agree with and you, And no one Rob. talks about and that. You, Same thing with know, George is, Floyd, too. No there one is talks one about police that. officer that, uh, that we can uh, name, and that is Officer Dorn here in St. Louis, who was the retired police captain who was murdered in a night of rioting in right. St. Louis last summer. You know, I'm really tired of this being the new normal, that every time there is a police shooting of an unarmed black man, that it seems that we have license to go out into the streets and riot and loot. I wish that the authorities would do what they need to do, which is stop this at the beginning and not let this keep going on and on and on until they think that they play themselves out. 
you know, these type of riots and these type of situations, they usually just don't stay in one city. They spread to other cities. And that's what I'm afraid is going to happen in the coming weeks and months. All right. I, I want to show you a tweet from uh, AOC, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, she I, I just don't Rick, I don't know what's happened to, to real leadership in this country. Uh, this does nothing but make the problem worse. Dante Wright's killing was not a random disconnected accident. It was the repeated outcome of an indefensible system that grants impunity for state violence, rewards it with endlessly growing budgets at the cost of community investment and targets those who question that order. Y years ago, you would never see something like that after a situation like this, but the left, they want to divide people. They want to make it about race. They, they encourage the, the rioting and the looting and uh, protesting is fine. We've all got that right, but they just, why couldn't she come out and, and her four other members of the quad come out and say, no, this, we shouldn't be doing this. Let's, let's remember Dante Wright. Uh, let's remember George Floyd, but we don't need the violence. Um, this, while we've got, we're on the precipice of crises in two different places right now. China could move on Taiwan. And Rick, I know you're well aware of the situation with Russia and Ukraine right now. What's the latest? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's developing into uh, more escalated tensions. Two days ago, Vice President, Bi or excuse me, President Biden called Vladimir Putin to de-escalate the tension. As a result of that, Two warships were being moved into the area, uh, into the Black Sea, uh, based on, you know, on the United States, what they were doing. And yet last night, those ships were pulled uh, from that region. And the uh, U.S. reasoning is that, well, they weren't sure if they were really going to move those ships there. And in short, Bi Biden, uh, you know, Biden blinked. And now it gives Putin more credibility, more strength. And it's going to continue to escalate the tension. And this is exactly what happened in 2014 right. when Putin invaded Crimea. So, you know, you've got this situation where it's just creating, a, you know, Biden is governing from a position of weakness. And our, our adversaries see this. And what's happening in Russia is going to curtail into China and Iran because they're going to see these same weaknesses. And it's going to create this situation where people in, in China and Iran and Russia are going to attack the U.S. on different levels. So Rick, it's creating a very dangerous environment. And Biden's lack of leadership is very problematic right now. I didn't realize that they, the two ships had been called back. The latest that I'd heard is that uh, Joe Biden had suggested an in-person summit with Vladimir Putin, uh, Jen Psaki said the ships normally do patrols in the Black Sea. So those two warships, U.S. naval ships, never made it to the Black Sea. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, Turkish government officials uh, indicated to the media that the U.S. did not uh, want those ships there. Uh, it's a clear indication. If, look, if Biden's going to make that threat, then you need to follow through with it. Now this is get emboldened Putin even more. And now uh, Russia's got about 110,000 troops amassed wow. on 56 locations on the Ukrainian border. And the Ukrainians are panicked, they're in fear uh, because of what happened in 2014 in Israel. People thought it wasn't gonna happen then, it could happen now, and Putin has got the upper hand at the moment. Yeah, it, it seems, Kelly, like the uh, our adversaries are taking advantage of, of what might be a weak president. I don't know what you thought of his performance yesterday when he was talking about the, uh, the troop withdrawal uh, for September 11th, but it, it, it just seems like this is all happening very quickly. He's been in office for less than 80 days now. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they're out of the gate testing him. They knew what to expect or not to expect with President Trump, and so you didn't see these escalations. We're seeing it in Russia, and now if we don't have those naval ships there, he's clearly blinked. Mm. He's relying on, you know, international bodies like the G7, which Putin clearly disrespects. And now you have President Xi in China, who is, you know, running, you know, air their air force into Taiwanese airspace in the South China Sea. What are we going to do to deal with these things? Um, this president doesn't seem to understand leverage. Um, he hasn't sanctioned um, the Nord uh, 2 pipeline uh, and put sanctions on that. So Russia's building that into Germany, which is a national security threat. Um, and he still hasn't done anything um, to, to combat the Chinese threat. Uh, he's left up the president's tariffs, which is good, but they're but, but what's next? Um, where Where is he going? And these international leaders are testing him. Yeah, and all the little funny cutesy tweets from Cori Bush and, and Ayanna Presley and AOC, they're not going to be so funny and cute if, if, if there's war in, in Crimea or in, in Ukraine and, and Russia and Taiwan and China. This is, this is very serious. Uh, and I'll tell you what, it, it's scary as well. Um, Rick, I want to talk more about this at the top of the hour. Uh, panel, enjoyed the discussion. We'll see you guys in a little bit.